Hi, I'm Leonardo Weiss. I'm leading our offering around intelligent product and services at Capgemini Invent. And I'm here with Jeff Parker to talk about platform business models in B2B. Hi, I'm Jeff Parker. I'm a professor of engineering at Dartmouth College, and I'm also a visiting scholar at the MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy. That's where I study uh, platform business models, platform technologies, and the impacts they have on firms. And I also have the good fortune of working with a number of firms on specific research topics like this one. So Jeff, Capgemini Invent has been collaborating now more than 10 years together with the MIT's initiative on digital economy, and we just launched our new research on B2B business platforms. So why are many companies now looking into platform business models? Yeah, so what we've seen over the last couple of decades, and really the last decade, is this explosion of platforms, but they've been primarily noticeable in the B2C sector. But the economics are compelling, um, they offer a value proposition to end users that's attractive, and so organizations and firms in other sectors, particularly B2B, have taken notice and are trying to apply some of those same ideas in their sectors. What makes B2B platforms so unique? How are they different from B2C platforms? And is there anything that we can learn from B2C platforms? So I think we can learn a lot from B2C platforms, but we have to keep in mind that there are enormous differences. And those are around the complexity of the overall solution or problem, and then often the complexity of landing a solution within a company's environment. There are big integration costs, there's customization that often has to happen, and so that's why the same uptake that we've seen in B2C often doesn't happen in the B2B world. And you mentioned B2B platforms. What type of B2B platforms do you see when talking to, to clients and companies? Yeah, we see them go across a range. They might be platforms that are more technology-based, like a Internet of Things that are designed to ingest data and then potentially do controls. We also see marketplace platforms that are designed for the exchange of goods or services, or some kind of hybrid where there might be some technology that the platform offers by itself that can then be built on top of um, either by a firm or organization itself or with some sort of an ecosystem. When we look at B2C, we see a lot of uh, positive examples of companies that are successful, but if you look into B2B, there are not that many examples of successful companies. So what are companies struggling with? What are their challenges? Yeah, I think some of it goes back to those issues of integration, but I think it's also cultural. I think that we've got a lot of companies that have had kind of existing business processes and ways that they implement technology that honestly hold them back because they've got planning processes that are much more waterfall as opposed to kind of a more test and learn agile framework. And so I think those are some things that companies are trying to learn as they then work with these more modern technology systems. It's been really helpful understanding uh, what we've learned so far. So what's ahead of the road with our research? What can people expect to see next? We're kind of at the mid-level right now, or, or, or midway through. So we did a lot of stakeholder interviews with a really interesting set of, of respondents from different sectors, agricultural, financial, services, manufacturing, uh, chemical industries, um, lots of information. And we've heard a lot of really interesting themes. And a lot of it was around what's the cold start problem? Sort of how do you overcome that? Going forward, we're launching a survey. We'll get several hundred responses because we have some hypotheses um, that have emerged from our work with interviews that we'd like to test and collect some more information. Yeah, that's really interesting. So looking forward to the next research and uh, stay tuned for our results with uh, the work we are doing with MIT.